Aww, yay! It's time for another episode of the Comic Book Kaiju. I am your host, one of your hosts, Trent Justin Vactor. But on this special episode, we have not only comedically tall, but sweater maven, tired and bored with himself, Mr. William Goodman. How are you, sir? Do you, do you know what uh, tired and bored with myself is from? Um, I do not. That is a that is a Bruce Springsteen lyric. Oh, nice! Very like nice. dancing, dancing in the dark. Uh, but I I am great, my man. How are you? I am doing very well because Mr. Goodman, I would say, is one of my favorite individuals in all of the metaverse. And you actually joined us for our Thor Love and Thunder review uh, way back when we were before we were comic book kaiju. We were we love comics. Um, before that, Vector loves comics. But now we are comic book kaiju, and I could not be happier to have you back again, my friend, because we're going to be talking all about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 5. So let's, because I haven't had you on and because I actually haven't talked to you about She-Hulk, what have you thought about these first four episodes? We're kind of at the halfway point of the show, or of the season, I should say. Uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, so there are nine episodes, right? Yes. Yeah. So honestly, it's been a little hit or miss for me. <clears throat> I think, uh, and I, I wrote this in my review that I did for Complex, but I, I really think the first two episodes were a lot of setup and mm. that the third, fourth, and now fifth episodes are really more in line with where I think uh, the show w was kind of meant to truly be. Mm. Um, I think the... First two episodes, again, we're, we're pretty set up heavy, setting up not only establishing She-Hulk in, in Jennifer Walters and her relationship with Bruce, but then also establishing who she was in this non-superhero way. And because it's 30-minute increments, right, I, I think you feel, in a weird way, you feel the length of those a little bit more than you would in an hour long episode. Hmm. I don't know if that's just me, but that has certainly been my perception of, of the episodes that I watched. Um, so this week is actually the first episode that I've watched quote unquote live. Cause I, I had screeners ahead of time and I really feel like the show started to kick into gear in it's third, but really it's fourth episode. And in also in this week too, where it's starting to provide really interesting juxtapositions, I think, of real world and superhero, uh, superheroics in, in, in those spheres clashing together in interesting and engaging, compelling ways that are a little atypical from what we were used to seeing in the MCU. But I think it took really three and a half episodes to get mm. to that space. And I know that has been a common issue, not only with, with Marvel streaming, but just streaming writ large, right? You, you have kind of that streaming service bloat, you know, the Netflix bloat where you, yeah. you often hear, oh, it takes five, six, a whole season to get good. Uh, I, I do think it took a little while for She-Hulk to find its footing. I think because of that, um, I kind of rubbed against some of those elements a little bit. You know, I think there is, there are definitely some VFX issues here. Mm -hmm. I think it, it has gotten slightly better with each subsequent episode. And I think this week's is probably the best that it's looked, uh, but I a few sequences in the first and the second episode, especially, were just were felt a little rushed to me. Uh, yeah. I, I would also say the the rendering that they did during the Megan the Stallion twerking sequence. I, <laughs> if if I was Marvel, I'm not sure I would have necessarily felt a hundred percent great about putting out that in particular. Right. Because it, it, it's funny, they they, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but uh, Titania makes a Sh Shrek reference this weekend. That's kind of how I felt watching that twerking mm, sequence. It's yeah, like this feels like right. something out of Shrek <laughs> in yeah. terms of its its overall VFX quality. So I don't want to hammer that home too too much. Other than just to to reiterate what I wrote in my review is that Marvel definitely has a VFX problem right now, and I, I think they really need to examine their process around that. But you know, I, I don't want to be um, un, un, unfairly critical of this, right? I, I, I want to kind of present my issues that I have with it. And, and, and but also say, you know, I, I think that there's 
a lot of good stuff here. I think it's just, it's taken their time to, to find that accordingly. I also felt some of the jokes have been maybe hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of the things I've, I've kind of pushed back against a little bit are some of the, the meta commentary stuff is, Mm. is either really effective or not really at all. I did find some of the stuff with, Jennifer talking about Wong as plot armor, a little trying to have their cake and eat it too, in a way that I'm not hundred percent sure that I necessarily jived with, but um, you know, I think the performances are great. I, I think Tatiana Zelani is, is an incredible actress an incredible performer and the show is giving her a lot to do. Uh, and, and I like how now we're starting to have this round out into more of an ensemble show, but yeah, what yeah. what what are uh, what are your feelings on it? Am, am I am I out of line in 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 your <laughs> in your mind in any of in any of those criticisms? No, all of those are valid. Um, I'm I've I've seen it from I guess I've taken it in week to week. Um, and each week the little short thirty minute doses have been enough for me to enjoy the comedy of it, enjoy the humor of it, but also the the difference of, and I've, I've said this before, I think they want to be Ally McBeal with superpowers or superheroes, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so I think for the large part, it has succeeded in that. And we saw that in this episode, I think getting into the taking on clients and um, not as much using her superpowers, but just being Jen Walters, her day-to-day life, all of those things I think have been successful the CG has been up, hit or miss, up and down, and I've—I think I've started to examine it more each week. I've—I've I've trying to pick out, oh, okay, how are the facial expressions on this CG? How is the rendering, um, the transformations, and everything? So, because of the criticism and because it hasn't been a hundred percent hit. I think I've started to look at it even more. I've put a microscope on it uh, more than I would have. Mm-hmm. So I think you're hundred percent correct. Marvel uh, needs to figure out if they're going to continue with the amount of Disney plus shows, as well as films, they need to figure out, okay, how can we pay these artists what they're worth? And how can we not overwork them? I think we see this a lot in the video game industry, you know, these crunch pr- that atmosphere, right? And it's the products are, they're so successful. I just, I wish they could find a balance of how can we put out the product, but also keep our employees happy and healthy at the same time. So I think Marvel a hundred percent needs to do something. Um, Who knows if they will, but it's been fun to watch uh, the show so far. Um, And I think episode five has, was one of my favorite, more uh, favorite episodes out of the ones that we've seen so far. Now I'm a huge, I don't think I've ever talked to you about this. I'm a huge fan of fourth wall breaking. So whenever she does it, and I think episode four was the most, I think out of all of them, this one, episode five, there was less, they kind of pulled back on the fourth wall breaking. What do you think about that? It really ebbs and flows. I think episode Mm. to episode, I think some installments rely on it more substantially than others. I think some of the early installments f- four, I think was really, really heavy on it. I think three was less. So one, so there's, there are peaks and valleys to it. And I think it's, it's hard to get a handle on that sometimes when it is so consistently inconsistent. Hmm. Uh, I, my personal preference is to have it more in the tone of how it was this week where hmm. Kind of it's, it's a little bit yeah it, that's the exact word i was going to use it's very subtle and i think it enhances as opposed to i think some of the stuff in four that really rubbed me the wrong way is that it feels like they're leaning into it as a crutch to ah. potentially get ahead of and i'm totally projecting here and mm-hmm. i willingly admit that so take this criticism as you will but it feels like they're trying to i mean that long line is the Twitter armor thing. It's like, you're trying to preemptively guess people's criticisms of the show. Right. And anytime you're that direct about it, I just, uh, I push against that in, mm. in, in a way. So the stuff this week I, I thought was much, uh, much more in line with my personal preference. Nice. I also think this week, you know, the way that they, and 
fashion pun intended, threaded the needle of these disparate elements of Jen's life, it, but also brought in something, this cool element that if you start to think about it, like, oh, of course there would be basically a superhero tailor, right? right. Like that right. is something that these characters have been a part of this world for the better part of, you know, a decade plus at yeah. this point. So like, right. of course there would be somebody who is focused on making bespoke garments for superheroes. And that whole environment, I think, worked really, really well and was actually cool to see insight into that. And then also having the way that I think the show is building uh, on its, you know, serializedness, but still having to manage to have that episodic feel, balancing those two things, I think particularly four and five have handled those two things in a very, very strong way. And, and five really felt like a culmination of everything that uh, the show has really been building to over the last couple of weeks. So, you know, to your point about it being more than kind of halfway at this point in the season, this feels like a natural crest in a lot of ways. And I, I, I am legitimately curious to see uh, how they're going to kind of continue to build on things for the remainder of this season, you know, I presume that we'll, we'll probably get to get more of this. Uh, you know, we can talk about the episodes ending a little later on and how we think that may play into the next, you know, six, seven, eight, nine. But I, I, I do feel like this was probably the episode that I had the most fun with. And at the very end of that, I was like, Oh, I actually wouldn't have minded to spend more time in this particular environment, whether it be with, uh, you know, Jen going up against Titania or being in this Taylor environment or, or really kind of examining. <laughs> I, I think the moments that the show is strongest is when it does a really good job of examining how the two spheres of Jen's life are now colliding together and, and what that means for her. Uh, and I think this episode handled those things in, in a way that felt very balanced and served both in a, a legitimately compelling narrative way. Yeah. I echo all of your sentiments and observations. I think the two, the A and B plot lines in this episode were fun and Pug being a sneakerhead. I didn't see that coming down the line, but when he started talking about the Iron Man threes, it just, it just made me chuckle kind of from a personal standpoint, having that experience and uh, just the character of Pug has been, kind of joyous um whenever i see him it's like oh there he is he's my buddy um A quick quick question did you buy the chemistry between pug and i, I i'm like her her friend whose name yeah, is escaping me right this yeah time. yeah I, it's ginger yeah but exactly thank you for that reminder yeah. i i that's maybe the one thing that i wasn't entirely sure i bought into was just how much of a shared history there was between the two of them granted when they're you know at the boba shop and in the elevator they do have a good rapport together so i think it works but i'm just not sure if there was enough there there for me personally to really i think make maybe the setup for that work even if the execution was handled in a really strong way yeah i could see that um it didn't necessarily throw up any red flags for me when i was it, it watching doesn't, it. yeah it doesn't bother me per se but I, i'm not exactly sure if they've done maybe all of the legwork there to right. make that as effective as they could have been. Right. And it is, I think, um, something of the running time being so short, you know, and they have to get the gen stuff out. The supporting characters are, are suffering because of that. They, the, all of the background coworkers and even her boss, we just don't see them that much because there's so little time um, to spread out. Maybe if it was an hour show, we would get more of that backstory. But yeah, I think I, I can see that 100%. There could be more um, backstory there. There could be more connecting threads between those two characters. Um, G Ginger Gonzaga and her character is Nikki Ramos. That is um, Nikki, that's right. the yeah. cool one. But yeah, that um, I, I wonder how much they're going to play into that and have them as almost like the three amigos and, and have them going forward. That is yet to be seen, but I'll keep an eye on that as as it goes on. Um, I did want to talk about uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry coming in as Mallory Book. Now, she popped in for a second in, I don't know, episode three, I think it was. I believe and that's correct, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Now, 
she's a pretty big star and why would she come in for just that so obviously she's going to come back so when she came back for this one and i saw the the um the clip that they released beforehand but i was like okay good now we can get into mallory brooke and she wasn't a character from the comic that i was particularly uh familiar with but i just like her presence i like her as an actor i love girls five eva um, I liked her in Hamilton. So seeing her come in as that um, that stern lawyer figure and kind of cold hearted. But we got to break down a little bit of her exterior in that scene afterwards where uh, Jen bought her a drink. Um, now, I actually wanted to ask you, what do you think about because my wife has been watching the show with me and she's loving it so far. But she didn't like the lack of confidence that Jen has and the a lot of not self-deprecating, but kind of the humor of, oh, she's so small. She's not as attractive as She-Hulk. You know, the kind of putting the Jen down is my wife is like, man, when is she going to be confident? When is she going to embrace She-Hulk? Um, I told her that I'm sure that will come by the end of the season. But what do you do you have any thoughts on? the Jen Walters of it, like we, you said, um, Tatiana Maslany, great actress. Do you, as Jen Walters, do you like that they kind of are dumping on her so much? You know, I, I do think this episode did a good job, I think, of starting to, I think, plant the seeds of why She-Hulk could be more of an appealing personality for Jen to lean into. You know, we saw a little bit of that with the dating app stuff in, in episode yes. four. Yeah. But I, I do think uh, your wife has a good point that it, it is one of those things. It's, you know, it's not like uh, Tatiana Mislani is, is a extremely attractive woman. And, and, and the fact that they're sort of trying to play it as otherwise is, is one of the one things that just, just totally just doesn't, work for me you know i guess you could potentially you know look at it i i don't that doesn't really i can't think of a good defense as to why they you would basically say like oh she's not an, an, an attractive person um mm -hmm. that that unless is one I, I'm, I'm sorry say, unless it's just to be or just to show how much of uh jerks these guys are the guys that were only attracted to She-Hulk yeah. versus Jen Walters. I, I think that's definitely part of it, it is to is to play up how prudish a lot of those guys are. Um, but yeah, I mean that that is I, I I agree that 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 part totally just doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also know, you know, there are plenty of, for lack of a better term, men's right activists on Twitter mm -hmm. who are complaining about you know the wokeness of the MCU mm -hmm. and having a mm -hmm. She-Hulk. So some of the criticisms that Jen is facing in the show are happening in real life. And, yeah. um, which I kind of like that. Um, you talked about earlier, the Wong Twitter armor, the, the show trying to predict what's going to happen because he's, you know, these episodes were written and produced months ago and just now coming out years ago. And during the pandemic, the writer's room was going on. Um, yeah, I think some of that stuff, you know, I think leaning into that specific criticism about, you know, there being a, what does there have to be, use, again, using this as an example, why does there have to be a female Hulk, right? right. Like <laughs> that kind of, that discourse happens all the time. Like it, 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 in, and it continues to be a thing. You know, we've seen it with Last Jedi that was a part of the new screen. Like the, these things just happen now. And so I think that is one el predictive element that I think is actually really grounded in a way, in, in reality, in a way that I, I think works. Whereas the, the stuff that is basically, there's a difference between being online and being online. Right. And I think the the Twitter armor thing is the difference between being online and being online. Mm. Like that stuff is kind of like to me, those are jokes that are playing for the Twitter timeline. Mm. Right. Versus just like being on the internet and sort of knowing that there are annals of the internet that are maybe not necessarily the the greatest places in the world to be, right? Um, so that stuff I think 
is a pretty true and accurate reflection of how reality is. Um, and I obviously the, the content of what those people are saying in a fictional environment, obviously is not ideal, right? But it is, there is a reality to it that I do appreciate that they're incorporating that element into it. Um, and, and I think that ties together with some of the other things. You know, I saw a lot of people, I think one of the first reactions that really went around from the first episode was that conversation Jen has with Ben about female rage, basically. Right, right. And, you know, I think there, there are a lot of, I saw kind of both sides of that argument. And while that is on some level kind of feminism 101, there is probably a large portion of the population that has never gotten that, that introductory lesson, right? So I do think there's some value in that. Right. And so that's the thing is I think there to me, this is the first show that I think is is really looking to engage with um, some weightier adult themes in the MCU. And you know, I don't want to give partial credit, but there is something to that that I do appreciate. Um, you know, I think during our Love and Thunder conversation, we kind of talked broadly speaking about kind of grading the MCU on a curve. Um, you know, and I don't want to just constantly basically be saying that oh this is good for an mcu thing and, and right, valuing right. it there right you want it to be good just as a tv show and, and yes. not having to you know codify it with this this mcu-ness right um and so that's the thing is there in, in fits and spurts i think there are really really engaging things in here but i think some of the stuff around the edges isn't necessarily the most well executed uh, all the time um so yeah yeah i think there's a lot in the the real, the the breaking the fourth wall is happening mm -hmm. on multiple levels. The direct talking to the camera, but then also the putting a spotlight on these are the issues that are going on. And like you said, this is years old, but the issues of gender and race, I think, are timeless and they're going to continue to come up. There's not going to be an easy fix for them. Hopefully we can slowly, slowly, slowly get to a point where it, we have equality, but the things that I'm even seeing, uh, so I've been trying to post daily short form content. Um, and it's just been comic book casting news, comic book bios. I've even seen just in the comments of my short form content, these, the people who either don't like racial swapping. Oh, that character's like, I just posted today about uh, Kiki Palmer yeah. wanting to play rogue. And I got surprising comments. No, no more. The, if, if they're white in the comics, they can't be black. And it's like, what, what world are we living in? And these people are commenting on my stuff. And it's like, I, do you not understand? Like, I don't want you here. If you're going to comment those type of things, you're, you need to go elsewhere. This is not the place for you. So the thing about, women uh gender like i said and race it's it just blows my mind that we're still talking about it in 2022 but i'm glad that there is a light still being shown because i i think the way that i grew up i was kind of sheltered from a lot of the i was like oh racism that was years ago we don't mm -hmm. we don't worry about that just because um i grew up on a lot of military bases and I didn't see a lot of uh, hatred. I didn't see a lot of racism, um, even just gender stuff. So it was just kind of shocking to me when I got into the real world back on into uh, the U.S. And I'm like, oh, OK, this stuff is still going on. So it's now 2022, like I said, and I'm still thinking about this stuff. But it's nice that a show can put that spotlight out there and have some type of um some type of this is what should have always been right like a, a woman as a lead and these type of things i like that they exist and it's not just oh this is everything is a man's world everything is one color and one like i like having diversity i like that marvel's doing a lot of this stuff um so kudos to them at least just for getting these things out there getting these things made and i think they've done a pretty good job as far as casting diversity um from the movies to the tv shows and uh, i've seen it with star wars as well so it's just i think disney in general has a good take on a lot of this stuff so i'm, I'm happy at least about that um i think 
And now I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mr. Goodman, but I think you were happy about the underground designer, Luke played by Griffin Matthews in this episode. Um, definitely my highlight of this episode. I, uh, did you have an opportunity to check out the flight attendant at all? Griffin Matthews is a pretty oh, essential part yes. of, okay, of that yes. show. Yes. And I've, okay. I've really, really, um, he, he plays like a close confidant yes. to, uh, yeah. to Kaylee Cuoco's character yeah. in, in that show. And, uh, he was one I of really my favorite parts. That. Yeah. He was one of my favorite parts of that show and I knew he was going to be in this. I, oh, I hope nice. we will see more yeah. of him. Um, yes because I enjoy him so much as a performer. And I think this was like a really great marriage between character and performer. I think he was just extremely well suited. His, his personality is, is uh, in this is very well. Uh, it's very similar to his, his role in the flight attendant as well. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I thought that was uh, such a fun wrinkle again, more clothing puns. How many, <laughs> you said thread earlier, how many more can we get throughout the course of this? But this is the uh, perfect episode for Mr. Goodman to be on Uh fashionista, William Goodman. I, I cherish that you joined us for this episode. I was thinking about that when I watched it earlier today, I was like, of all the episodes to be on to talk with actor <laughs> about, this is, this is like kismet. This is really the perfect one, but no, I mean, I, I think that's, that stuff was really, really cool. And, and again, opens, um, opens a side of the MCU that we haven't seen before, right? And I think that was what I really liked about Miss Marvel as well, is yeah, right. opening these <clears throat> portals uh, in Miss Marvel, there were actual portals, uh, but, you know, <laughs> o opening these spaces in the MCU that we're not totally familiar with and, and offering new perspectives. And I think any... I love r really great world building. I think that mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you know, it's part of what I love about things like um fantasy sci-fi like all, all genre stuff in general is is these worlds that you can kind of step into and, and having something like that for this is such a it's such a no-brainer thing um and even some of something as simple as kind of like oh of course there would be a law agency devoted to kind of superhero right. or <laughs> or paranormal right. however you want to kind of describe yeah. it but superhero adjacent things right and that same way of course there would be a place where superheroes could go and find a way to, to make costumes for themselves. Yes. Right. And Which my oh, wife no. um, also is very much into fashion. So not only does she love uh, Titan, every Titania outfit that she saw on screen, she was like, I love great. That. I love that. Great stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when she was, she's, she was always commenting like, why is she still wearing that men's warehouse, you know, oversized <laughs> suit? And with both buttons buttoned, by the way, that's a, <laughs> that's a no, no. <laughs> when I saw that, uh, so I watch each episode twice. I watch it first thing when I wake up and then later on in, in the day with my wife. And so I'd already seen it. She was like, man, when is she going to get a new suit? And I was like, just keep watching. You'll see it. And I think this, this uh, episode was definitely perfect along those lines of, all right, we, we've already seen pictures of her in that purple kind of, spandex uh fantastic four looking kind of suit so i'm interested to see the courtroom stuff and then also that you know the uh the superhero suit the um, the the she hulk romper basically yeah, yeah. onesie uh <laughs> which is very you know i was playing Fortnite earlier today and the she hulk costume in that the suit is very similar um but i was kind of isn't getting it ready. long sleeve in that one like it's uh you know what Oh, no, it's not. You know why? The only reason I know is because uh, the only reason I remember this is because her arms are jacked in that. Mm. And she's like showing off like the muscle, mm. the definition in her muscles uh, Hold on, are I'm gonna popping out. And you know what's also interesting? The Jen Walters in Fortnite. Oh, it's it has pants. That's what it is. Yes. It's, right, right, it, right. it's sort of like um, it's almost like a turtleneck construction yes, with some pants right. and then these tall boots. Yeah, that but that purple white gradient is is very reflective i think of what her final outfit will be when she nice. meets daredevil which is going to happen next week um i mm. i thought that was um very clever how they decided to kind of approach handling that and uh you know i think um charlie cox spoke a little bit about kind of the version of matt that we're going to see in in the show moving forward and uh it sounds like he's going to be slightly more playful than than maybe we saw him in his netflix here so I, i'm 
curious about that uh, to, to see how they'll kind of adjust that tone accordingly. But no, I mean, I, I think it, it's funny about the suits because I hadn't thought about that until they brought it up. And I was like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. like she really just has been in these the entire time. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Renee Lee Goldsberry had that. Um, I think she, she was the one who had the line about the, I don't want you to look like a, uh, a NFL player that had a DUI or something. Uh, <laughs> that that line was, was great. That was um, the writing I think has been uh, great so far. Um, Jessica Gao, I think has done a great job as showrunner and um, very much looking forward to what she comes out with in the future. But yeah, just, I think overall um, good, solid episode this week building off of the setup of the, the dating scene. And then there was a culmination of that. Like, Oh, these, this came in handy that we saw that. Um, like you said, just a, um, this is kind of a crescendo maybe for the season of building up or cresting of, of all of these things coming together. So I'm very much excited to see daredevil. And I had, I was told there was going to be a post scene post credits stinger after every episode. Um, I don't know if you were told that, but somebody told us wrong, Mr. Goodman, because there was none after this one. I was upset. Yeah, I think, um, I think there was probably, that was probably something that maybe perhaps got lost in translation because critics were provided the, uh, critics, writers, bloggers, whomever were provided the first four episodes and there were post credits tags for each one of those so if you see, you know, something that, that pattern it, that looks like a duck, walks <laughs> like a duck, quacks like a duck, you start to think it's a duck. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so maybe we were, you know, our expectations there were, were slightly misaligned, but mm. uh, just, just based on, you know, what, what those folks had seen in advance. Yeah. But well, uh, in lieu of that, because we didn't get that, the daredevil helmet was, that was my post credit scene yeah to and, and to that point i think that's a good that's how i would like for those things mm. to be right like I, I would like to have to me that feels more evocative of how you would actually read a comic book when you get right. to that last right. splash page mm-hmm. and you have that last page reveal that cliffhanger that hook to keep you coming back next month i mean i think that is what you know that's what happens in episodic television all the time anyways right, right. so so having a moment like that I think does bait the hook in a nice way for this thing that we know is coming next week. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll be, I'll be curious to see if they touch on the fashion element of that at all. I'm not sure that they will, but you know, some connected tissue there outside of just uh, having the helmet and, and the hat box basically would be interesting, but yes. yeah, no, I think um, again, four and five, I think have, have really done a good job. I think of, of building on the foundation that this show has set and, introducing these new wrinkles i mean the idea of having a magician that was basically a, a dropout <laughs> of carbotage that's like a genuinely inspired creative idea to see that through from start to finish from its execution it's like of course there would be you know basically the the joe bluth of the mcu who <laughs> is 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 performing illusions in in hollywood somewhere uh, you know, who decides that, okay, maybe I need to spice it up by actually summoning hell and demons, right? Like yeah. that, that is an issue of a comic book I would love to read. Oh, and, yeah. and yeah. you know, and we got to see that and I think it was really smartly executed. And so I, I want more stuff like that and less stuff like, you know, having basically an origin story for a whole episode. And I, yeah. you know, apparently that the, the pilot episode I think was supposed to come later in the season. Yeah. I and I'm, read I'm, that. I'm almost, I'm happier that it came right up front because I think mm. that would have really killed a lot of the momentum mm. of what we're seeing here where, you know, as I've said, these things are starting to crescendo in this way. Um, so I'm glad that that was up front so it can kind of continue to build and build and build. But yeah, I think the, the four and five have been a really, really strong execution, I think, of the show that they've set out to build. And um, I'm hopeful that they can kind of continue to to format the show in that way accordingly. Yeah, this was, I think, Four and five are the most cohesive episodes. Um, the cast has Without come together. Um, so yeah, 100%, I'm enjoying She-Hulk. It's one of my favorite things to watch each week. And Mr. Goodman, if you find some Avengers or some Avengers movie uh, uh, <laughs> clothing, Apparel. let me know. Send me a link to any Avengers 
apparel that you see because I want some. Did you notice the designs on that? I, I think were uh, eight were eight softs. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that was a nice little emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was cool. nice little nice little odd. I, I'm I'm sure if there were Avenger Con t shirts or merch made in the wake of Miss Marvel, I'm sure there will be legitimate bootleg merch that Marvel's <laughs> trying to sell. Uh, yeah, even if it's just a hat, um, that would be interesting. So yeah. I did like that how the shield was like inverted colors like basically, <laughs> it was a palette swap basically like yeah. it wasn't even it wasn't even like us agent or anything like that it was literally just like we're gonna have the same captain america colors but it's gonna be again like a palette swap you would see in a capcom game that was <laughs> the small small details like that are always fun. yes well i think that was um a very good discussion mr goodman of episode five she hulk mean green and straight poured into these jeans um, thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Goodman. And I am loving all of the writing that you're putting out. Why don't you tell our lovely viewers, if you're watching on YouTube or listeners, where they can find you writing on the Internet this week? Sure. So, uh, you know, fairly regularly over at Complex doing something at least once a week, typically in our, our What to Watch column that releases on Fridays, um, you can typically find me covering Rings of Power <laughs> there. Uh, and I think once we get past the House of the Dragon episodes that I have not seen already, there will be some writing done about that as well. Uh, so pretty, again, pretty pretty consistent there uh, in a little less regular at GQ, but, but have some work there as well. I actually just did uh, a round above the Phase 5 announcements out of D23. If folks are looking for oh, Marvel-specific nice. related content over at GQ. Um, so that that's probably the most um, recent work applicable to, to viewers and or watchers of the show. Very nice. And they can find you at GoodmanW on Twitter. Yes. For all that's of those... Kind of yeah, as you were going to say before I interrupted you, I apologize. That that yeah, is kind no of the <laughs> the best central hub for 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 my work or um, you know updates on shows, films, whatever that yes. I've seen. So yeah, and I want to let everyone out there know: not only is Mister Goodman comedically tall, but I think he's one of the best minds that we have for analyzing television. Mister Goodman and I go back. We actually did a Mad Men podcast way back in the day, um, and. I've just been astounded by the growth of Mr. Goodman and the analytical mind of Mr. Goodman. So anyone out there, if you want a thoughtful analysis, Mr. Goodman is the writer that you want to be reading. So I a hundred percent recommend all of the things that Mr. Goodman puts out. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Goodman, for joining us. You, you made our show better and you made it smarter with your analysis. That uh, the checks in the mail, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone out there for watching us. If you're on YouTube, which I'm trying to put out more YouTube content, definitely leave us a comment down below and let let us know what you thought about maybe She Hulk episode five or comic book kaiju in general. Um, we we always are on YouTube, but if you have just if you want us in audio form, anywhere your podcasts are found, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts. All of those places. And if you'd be so kind, actually, on all those platforms, leave us a review or uh, let us just kind of share us with your family and friends. Word of mouth is is uh, a very big thing for us. And letting people know that we're out there is one of my goals, just to let people know that we exist in the world. So if you can spread us, uh, spread some love. And actually, even uh, leaving a comment on YouTube, I found is very good for YouTube pushing it out into the world and, and kind of letting people know in their feeds that uh, we exist. So if, even if you just want to put a comment down below and uh, let, let us know what you thought about our hats that we're wearing today, put it down in the comments on YouTube. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Goodman again for joining us. And I would like to let everyone know that William Goodman loves comics and you should too.